Sportsfeld story time. We are taking you back, all the way back, ten years back. It is September fifth, two thousand and eleven. We are in the thick of Brett Laurie mania. If you weren't there, we say many times. If you weren't there, you would not believe the ridiculousness that was Brett Laurie injecting life into a five hundred team. 15 games back of first place <laughs> in the American League. We have arrived at the 30th game of Brett Laurie's career, uh, which at this point is hard to believe. He had been in the league for one month. He was hitting 317, 372, 663 for a 1.035 OPS. He had already hit seven home runs and driven in 20. He had hit four triples, seven doubles, 33 hits, and... 18 of his 33 hits were for extra bases. He'd struck out 23 times also, but we're not going to talk about that. Getting on a ton, adding tons of wins. Even though the team was still five, they were 13 and 16 in his first 29 games. Brett Laurie, an absolute fireball. And coming in, the Blue Jays in this game came into this game 69 and 71. So two games below 500 had just lost to the Yankees and they were at home. It was a Monday afternoon Monday at 1.08 p.m. local time, 27,000. Labor Day, baby. 573 fans piled into the Rogers Center on a holiday Monday in 2011. Crazy. It's a really fun lineup for the Blue. You can tell it's like we're 14 games back kind of, th- kind of lineup. You have Mike McCoy hitting leadoff. That is offensive. Mike McCoy leading off and playing shortstop, no less. Yes. You have Eric Thames in left field. You have Jose Molina behind the plate. You have Dwayne Wise in center. You have Henderson Alvarez on the hill going up against Josh Beckett, who in 2011 was an all-star and ninth in Cy Young voting. All the makings of just an absolute shit kicking. Yeah, you got to assume they were going to lose this game. By the way, Dwayne Wise, who goes over four and strikes out four times, should be <laughs> should be noted at the bottom. Of the line. <laughs> Mike McCoy stole two bases in this game. Anyway, go on. I was just saying, it's kind of a for an eleven inning thriller in early September in a lost season. We've we sort of talked about in the last couple episodes, sort of how Brett Laurie couldn't have been anything else, and his career with the Blue Jays couldn't have gone any other way because that's just how. It was going to happen. This game couldn't I, like this is. I think in a, you could maybe say that the grand slam against Oakland we talked about last week was the peak of Lori Mania. I think it's this game, which is why we're talking about it today. Couldn't have asked for a better script if you were looking for optimism about the 2012 Blue Jays than this game. And I'll tell you, uh, we'll get into all of it. In a minute here, but this entire series, I will say, is your is your ticket into Laurie Mania because mm. by the end of this series, is the highest his average will be for the rest of the year. He comes out of this series hitting three thirty four oh three six seventy eight because in this four games against Boston where they go three and one, he has five hits, a home run, draws four walks, like he hits four fifty five against Boston and gets on base sixty two percent of the time, like he choose up Boston. And that was part of the appeal, of course. It wasn't just that he was this maniac that was playing well. He was doing it against the Yankees and the Red Sox. Like that, right. that did matter. Like it, we were desperate. You have to understand. <laughs> we were desperate. So he was he had a good series against the Yankees. He had a good series against the Red Sox. And it was like, yes, 
we've got our answer to this unsolvable puzzle, which is the American League East. Yeah, and to your point, this game kicked off that four game series, but there's some like there are some crazy games in this series. Like the day after this, the Red Sox beat the Blue Jays fourteen to nothing. Yeah, that seems right. Two days later, an 11-10 thriller. The Blue Jays score five runs in the bottom of the eighth. To your point, Brett Laurie, that game moves up in the batting order. Oh, no, he's still hitting sixth. Hit six. He goes two for two, two runs and a walk. Uh, Stolen base, being hit by a pitch. And then in the closing game of the series, it's a 7-4 Blue Jays victory. Brett Laurie goes... Two for four with two runs scored, just like and a double. But and I think I think to your point though, you look at maybe that last game, that that uh that seven to four victory in the fourth game of the series, and you really see why Lori Mania, I think, was tied in with this thought that the Blue Jays might be building something. You look at the lineup for that game, you have you know Escobar leading off, you have Thames left. Batista in right, Encarnacion DHing, Laurie at third, Aaron Sebia catching, Ricky Romero on the hill. Romero goes six and two thirds for his 14th win of the year. And you're like, okay, they're putting something together. And the core of it, the guy in the middle of this that's going to bring it all together and give us our identity is a Canadian named Brett Laurie. <laughs> You had to love it. You absolutely had to love it. As you mentioned, this this game starts off height of Laurie Mania. Also, maybe the height of like Henderson Alvarez is a, a guy for the future for us. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hendo, six innings, four hits, one walk, four strikeouts. Drops his ERA to two point nine five. If you can believe that. Wow, he's I actually an, can't. I actually can't believe that, and I lived through it. He's an all star in two thousand fourteen. Henderson Alvarez. Really, he made thirty starts. Had three shutouts and posted a ERA of 2.65 at age 24. Wow. And was out of the league two years later. He made seven more starts over the next three years and then never pitched again in the major leagues. Isn't that strange? Baseball is a cruel game, man. Henderson Alvarez. 30, and he's also 31 years old. That's wild. Uh, very strange how that sort of happens. One of those guys that I remember as it was happening, it was like he's – not doing anything spectacularly well other than not getting absolutely lit up, uh, <laughs> which was enough. Uh, as you mentioned, Josh Beckett on the other side, he goes three and two thirds. Then Alfredo Aceves goes three and two thirds. Daniel Bard goes an inning in two thirds. Jonathan Papelbon throws a scoreless inning. For the Jays, it was Hendo Alvarez, then Carlos Villanueva, an inning, then Casey Jansen, an inning, then Frank Francisco, two innings. Somehow does not cough it up despite <laughs> being Frank Francisco and Sean Camp. The happy Man. camper, top of the top of the 11th, no problem. Remember how fun it was to hate Jonathan Papelbon? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I feel like baseball needs more villains. <laughs> I feel. There was a real streak there of like really easy to hate relief pitchers. Mm. Like you had your John Rockers, you had your Jonathan Papelbons, you had your not reliever, but you had your Kurt Schillings. Like we don't really have, a, there's not a lot of villains in baseball anymore. It's mostly just Bauer. Yeah. I guess it's just Bauer. I mean, I don't know who else it would be. It becomes, you know, Rudman Odor, I guess, but it's almost like pathetic now at this point. He's just like, and terrible. that's like, and that's pretty like local to the Jays. Yes, that's true. He's just terrible. What else can you yeah, even say? He's so bad. Entertaining for us from a Schadenfreude perspective, but sure. Yeah, no, no, but it's not the same as like everyone hated Papelbon. Yeah. Red Sox fans kind of hated Papelbon. <laughs> like, the Blue Jays would get runners on first and third in the first. They get a runner on third in the second. They put runners on second and third in the third inning. They get runners on first and second in the top of the fourth. The first and third in the bottom of the fourth. Really, they threaten a bunch of times in this game. They put two on in the bottom of the eighth, but Adam Lynn strikes out. And then the bottom of the ninth with two out, Brett Laurie faces Daniel Bard. Unfortunately, he grounds out. So we go to extra innings. As I mentioned, Frank Francisco gets Ellsbury and Pedroia walks Adrian Gonzalez, who I'd forgotten, played for the Boston Red Sox. Remember Adrian Gonzalez? I do, but not a name I've thought of in quite some time. No kidding. Adrian Gonzalez gets out of the jam by getting David Ortiz to ground out 
third base on, I believe, a shift. Bottom of the 10th, Jose Molina singles. Dwayne Wise strikes out on a foul bunt. Who is managing this team? Charlie Montoyo <laughs> asks. Uh, <laughs> Chris Woodward, who I believe is now the manager of the Texas Rangers, pinch runs for Molina and then moves to second on a pickoff attempt. Mark Tian, Remember Mark Tian? I do remember. Chris Woodward also needs to be said part of the uh, Drury. Brandon, oh, yes. The, the Brandon Drury All-Stars of guys that for some reason my brain thinks are Canadian. Yes, Chris Woodward but, is not Canadian. But just are not at all. Huh. Was Mark Tian Canadian? I feel like that one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Canadian. Thank you, honey. Half Canadian. Thank you. There you uh, go. Mark Tian pinch hits and walks. Eric Thames strikes out. Jose Batista walks. We have bases loaded. Bottom of the 10th for Adam Lind. And he strikes out swinging to Pavel Blonde, who I'm sure made a dumb face and looked like an idiot and puffed his way to the dugout because that's what Jonathan Pavel, Pavel Blonde did. Not like the guy that we're doing the whole story time on who was no. never like that in the dugout. Completely different. Completely different. <laughs> t- yeah, completely different situation. Completely different situation. Top of the 11th is Sean Camp. As I mentioned, he gets Kevin Euclid. Speaking of names I haven't thought about. Speaking of names that you, you. you thought that you would – be talking about for the rest of your life when they were playing. And then it was basically immediately forgotten. Kevin Euclid. Also the next guy up who, when he signed in Boston, it was like the world was over. Yes. Well, they got, they got Carl Crawford and they got Gonzalez in the same off season. Yeah. I thought when Carl, I thought Carl Crawford was going to be like the, the next Ken Griffey. Yeah. Well, when he played for Tampa Bay, he was against the blue. Jays. Yeah, that's right. He basically. And then when, when Boston gone, it was like, Oh, it's over. They're going to be like, it doesn't matter now. Uh, Josh Reddick, who I think is still in the league. Uh, yes, I think he just got signed to a minor league deal somewhere. Pops out, and we go to the 11th. It's Encarnacion, a deep fly ball. Does not go out. Kelly Johnson pops out. Kelly Johnson was bad as a Blue Jay. I had such exciting high hopes for Kelly Johnson as a Blue Jay. I don't know why, but I remember when they got him, I was like, okay, that's like a legitimate. It was It was how low expectations were back then. It was like, that's a legitimate major leaguer. This is a great idea. And then it like was Kelly Johnson. He is cut from the uh, who was the guy they had last year that they picked up Jonathan VR cloth. Yeah. Of like you, he doesn't play for your team. So you don't see all the reasons why you would hate watching him. And you're like, yes, that's exactly the numbers. It. Like, oh, numbers wise, Kelly Johnson's a usable second baseman. And then he gets here and you're like, oh no. Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> so two out in the 11th. It's time for the one Redboard. and only. Can forget about it. Brett Laurie has just walked off the Red Sox. Home run number eight. The ninth walk-off win for the Blue Jays this season. Brett Laurie with his first comes on his eighth home run. That's how you do it. And I think he knew it too. Pitch in the middle of the plate. He extends through it, home run number eight, and the Blue Jays go to nine and zero at home in extra innings. That's a no doubt about it, right there. Brett Laurie, it's a walk off, eleventh inning, one nothing, home run against the hated Boston Red Sox, who would be a ninety win team. Jake, what was your memory of of the incredible Brett Laurie Labor Day walk off? I was, I, I actually remember it really well. I was in my parents' basement watching the game, and it was Labor Day, I'm pretty sure. Only reason I can think of for a one o'clock Monday game in early September. And it was like, as we said, it was the height of Lori Mania. Obviously, I was on board because he was so entertaining, so crazy. And then he came up in this spot, and it kind of was, it had that feeling of like, well, of course he's gonna. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like a predetermined thing, quite like, we saw with some of like the Batista Donaldson at bats later on was like, well, like I, I compare this one in my brain a lot to the Donaldson walk off in the final home game of the 2015 season against Tampa. I was like, of course he's going to walk it off, but this was close. And this was like, I remember he came up and it was, it was that sort of dual feeling of like, this is too perfect. There's no way like he can't because we were sort of conditioned like he can't keep this up. And he won't keep this up. Like he's good, but he's not like, is he that good? And then it was, and then like the ball left the bat and it was just like, it was 
joy. It was excitement. It was like, it, it again, like we've said so many times uh, over the last couple of weeks, it's hard to explain if you weren't there, but it really felt in this moment when that ball off the bat, it really felt like the next major league superstar had arrived. He played for the Jays. Yeah. And uh, boy, he was, he could always, he just gets so, so damn fired up. It's just so he funny. Runs, he runs the bases in like nine seconds. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Brett Russell Laurie. It was uh, everything you said and more. Absolutely correct. He was uh, absolutely destined to be in that spot and to hit that home run. It was like not a surprise and not a, not a, uh, not out of the ordinary. I mean, uh, as I said, he had he'd hit seven home runs in 30 games coming into that spot. In this season, the person that he drove in the most was himself. The person that he's driven in by the most was himself. He was this like, you had Batista as this guy that was like coming into his own and becoming a, a legitimate guy. And you, he was this bright, shiny, like the young, brash star that was going to be the piece that completed the puzzle and never looked more the part than he did on September 5th, 2011. Absolutely incredible. If you had told me on September 5th at like, well, this was a three hour, 50 minute game. So if you had told me at 5 PM on September 5th, 2011, that 10 years later, we would barely remember the Brett Laurie era of the blue Jays or would only remember it for the wrong reasons. I would have thought you were crazy. And that 10 years later, he had been out of the league for five years. Right. Yeah. Uh, We will get into that. We will get into what happens after the summer of Brett Lowry, the uh, missed games, the injuries, the trade, and everything after as, as has not been seen since the beginning of 2016. All that and more next week on the next episode of Sports Belt Storytime. 